This is Callum, everybody. Say hi, Callum. Hey, guys. <laughs> this is what I've done to this poor bike. Just kidding, it's way better now. <laughs> so I gave you guys an update that he put the, uh, the full wiring harness and the new 9.8 battery in there. And then he also put, uh, how much charging did you put on there? Uh, so this is three 3.3 kilowatt chargers. Okay, so you're gonna get around 9.9, .9, 10 kilowatts with that thing because they'll go a little bit higher with yeah. voltage. But that nine point, that's, that's how many amps is that of charging? Uh, what is that they're doing? 96? 96, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, so. Almost 100 amps. Yeah, and the battery's how many amp hours? Uh, 78 amp hour battery. Yep. So, so that means you had to what? Um, well, had to override the contactor, which uh, potentially could have gone smoother, but I wound up with a fairly neat solution. Yeah, Callum didn't want to just tap directly into the battery, so yeah. he came up with... Um, the, uh, the sensible man's ignition, as uh, Morgan Vetter called it. Anyway, we have a second kill switch here. Uh, so there's the normal stop-run switch over here, um, but this guy is now just a on-off button for the contactor. Basically, so you can control um, the contactor manually. Yeah, entire 100% manual ignition. Um, okay, which is pretty fun. So you need the key on and the contactor. Yeah, so key um, being a push start at the moment, very handy, and then contactor. And you probably couldn't hear that click in the video, but I swear it clicked. <laughs> um, and then what's the difference when you start charging? And then uh, when you start charging, you actually leave this off. Um, and the chargers supply the uh, voltage to close the contactor. I see. So when you're charging, contactor's force closed. The uh, battery can scream at me if it wants to, but uh, it's gonna just charge. <laughs> <laughs> cool, very cool. So that's that's your way of bypassing 1C on that, yep. which is very interesting. So over 1C charging, and then a couple of little bits so far, just some little bar end mirrors, and I'll eventually be hopefully putting fairings on this. So, all this will go away. Right, you said you wanted to make a tank for it? Yeah, I want to make a, a tank cover for it. I may rearrange these chargers just a tiny bit to see if I can get them a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, yeah, I definitely want to either make a totally custom tank cover or adapt something um, to fit so I have some place to put my, put my stomach. <laughs> in these that isn't, uh, hard bits of metal. Um, mm. Probably going to do away with the seat might might do something with a subframe um, oh that'd be cool to move the seating position and kind of expand me on the bike a little bit because these things are tiny so you don't have um, a stupid seating position anymore yeah because you were just like <laughs> <laughs> um and then i've designed in cad some rear sets i gotta get a chunk of aluminum go up to my friend's cnc mill uh -huh. and uh, make up some rear sets for this oh and, that's gonna uh, be cool then uh yeah just for now, I found somebody's little 3D file for a uh, fender eliminator. So, got carbon fiber reinforced 3D printed fender Holy eliminator. Holy shit! That's um, is that legal? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Well, it's cool. So you 3D printed the fender eliminator? Yeah, then? it's somebody else's design, so I can't take credit for that one. Yeah, but you um, did print it, so yeah, that's and then cool. Little bits of carbon fiber right behind the uh, the nuts here, just to reinforce those little tabs. Um, just because I have I see carbon it, yeah. fiber. Uh, yeah. You know, fun little turn signals. You do. Uh, you want to get shot? Yeah, right? sure. That, which is fun. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, that's what he's doing on it. <laughs>